guys, it's Kira and Jesse, and we are here with our November edition of Let's Paint Live, and we are painting farmhouse pumpkins mm -hmm. tonight. So if you are not familiar with our Let's Paint Live program, it's where Jesse and our other artists teach you to paint a painting in just about an hour, and we are live tonight, so you can watch this on Facebook Live, or after you can watch it on demand and tomorrow it'll be on our YouTube channel yep. where we have a whole entire library of on-demand paintings from our past paint night lives mm -hmm. and also our Let's Paint entire education program is there where there are skill builders, there are studio lessons, we have Andy Jones and Donna Dewberry and Jesse. so be sure to check out our Let's Paint our platonline.com slash let's paint where you can find information mm -hmm. about our whole education program and all our products. We have some great kits, which it's getting into the holiday season. So buy it for yourself or buy it and give as a gift because it yep. will be Black Friday be before gift. you know it. Yep. Um, and again, so we are live. So if you comment and share during this live, you will be entered to win all the product for December's Paint Night Live. And we're gonna preview that at the end. And we're doing Christmas ornaments and they are adorable. So you guys wanna stay tuned. So comment and share below so you can be entered to win the entire kit to create the ornaments for next month. Mm -hmm. So again, we are here live. We are painting farmhouse pumpkins and this is a beautiful color palette Jesse's put together. And I love that they're blue and warm mm -hmm. and rustic. Yeah, so it's a little different. Yeah, not typical orange. Right. We're using <coughs> our folk art paint. So we have hope you are painting along, maybe taking some time for yourself or you're getting together with all your friends. And don't forget also when you're done, I have lots of reminders for everybody <laughs> tonight, to hashtag plaid crafts and let's paint so we can see what you're painting because yep. we want to see what you've done with yeah. us. We love to share, we love to like and see everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I'll check back in throughout the night. Don't forget to comment, share. If you have questions, we'll try to answer them live or we'll get back to you. So Jesse's going to get started and we'll touch base with you guys. Sounds good. Thanks, Jesse. All right. So first I'm going to go over um, what supplies you're going to need for tonight. So we are going to need our 12 by 12 wood panel. We have this pack of three flat brushes. These are folk art brushes. Um, we are going to need a palette knife. So you can have plastic or metal. It doesn't matter. Just a long palette knife. Um, and then the, I have my water basin, my paper towels, my palette paper. Um, and then the colors, the folk art paints we'll be using tonight are vintage white. We've got blue lullaby, French blue, navy blue, see what you've done with that. mushroom, real brown. And then we're going to be using some treasure gold, which is one of my favorite new paints by Folk Art, and we're going to be using that towards the end. Okay, also tonight we're going to be using this template that you can download online, or you can feel free to paint your own pumpkins if you're comfortable with that. Um, so we have this template here, and what you need to do, it gives you instructions on how to cut it out and piece it together. So you want to do that first, and we're, I'm going to show you how to transfer it onto your canvas. So you can see here, I've already cut mine out and, and taped it together, so it should, be, it should fit your 12 by 12 canvas perfectly. And so if you do not have transfer paper, which this is transfer paper you can get at the art store, any craft store, um, what you can do is flip your template over and cover the back with pencil like this, but just a graphite pencil or chalk. And once you've got the whole thing covered, you flip it over and trace over the lines and it'll imprint your lines onto the canvas. So that's a really good tip um, to learn how to transfer another drawing onto a canvas when you're painting. But tonight we're going to use transfer paper, so I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to take your transfer paper, and most transfer papers will tell you which side is up, um, but if not, one side will be smooth and one side will feel a little chalky. We want the chalky side down. And what is transfer paper, or where do you buy this? Yeah, transfer paper, um, like I said, it's something that artists use to transfer, um, transfer images, like if they want to do a sketch first without having to sketch on their canvas. So they'll do a sketch and they'll transfer onto their canvas using this paper. And it's really just, it's like a carbon paper. Um, it's got sort of a chalky substance on one side. And so when you press down on the top, it, it uh, presses that substance onto the canvas. So I'll show you kind of how it works. And you can get this at your local at any craft, craft store, store at any art Amazon. Store, Amazon, absolutely. Okay, great. So we're just gonna tape this down. You don't need a ton of tape. I just want, don't want it to move around. So I'm gonna tape it down to the top. And don't forget where we have um, the chalky side down. And then I'm going to put my template face up, which might be confusing since we're transferring it, but we want it to be face up. And the template's available on platonline.com and also yep. on the um, event listing. If you click below, you can get all the products. So if you haven't 
um, purchase the product and you're not painting live, you can click and get all this product. And also, we have this free pattern for you. Yep. Or you can, like I said, if you feel comfortable paint or uh, drawing your own pumpkins, feel free. But we have this template for if you don't. Okay, so I've got my um, transfer paper chalky side down, and then I have my template on top of it, and I tape them just both down so they won't move. We're gonna grab one of our paint brushes, and we're gonna be drawing on it with the end of it. So what you wanna do is you wanna press down fairly hard, and all we're gonna do is trace all of the lines for this template. So you just wanna press down, you don't have to press down crazy hard. Um, the harder you press, the darker the line will be, but we don't need a super dark line for this. So you just wanna make sure that you've got all the lines. And another tip for this, something that I like to do often, um, if I've got a ballpoint pen around, especially a red ballpoint pen, I will use that to transfer. Um, so that way I can kind of see where I've drawn already based on where the red pen is. I can see on top of my template where I have already traced the lines and make sure I don't miss any. So we're just tracing these lines from the template, nothing fancy, just tracing it with the end of our paintbrush so that that carbon paper is gonna press onto our canvas. Yep. And while Jesse is tracing, again, if you are just joining us for our Let's Paint Live, we are painting farmhouse pumpkins tonight. And we have just gotten started. We let everybody know that you can get the pattern in the link below so you can print this mm -hmm. and you can trace it right onto your wood canvas. Also, all the product is listed below so you can go ahead and purchase that if you are not already painting along with us live. And if you are just catching this and you want to go back, don't forget that on Facebook, right after our live, that this video will be available, that you can watch it, replay, you can pause, you can stop, so you can mm -hmm. take your time, relax, and paint along with us. And also tomorrow, this will be on our YouTube channel, along with all our other Let's Paint uh, mm -hmm. videos and programs. So we have a whole entire on-demand painting library. And again, we have Jesse, we have Andy Jones, we have Donna Dewberry. So we have so much free education out there. Mm -hmm. and it's just a, great, a great way content. yeah and it's from everybody from a beginner to an expert so if you've never picked up I always say if you've never picked up a paintbrush mm -hmm. you can do this I promise you or if you are an expert they have beautiful paintings and subject matter so don't forget to check out plotonline.com slash let's paint yep. where you can get all that information and Jesse is teaching us how to paint farmhouse pumpkins yes. Also, real quick, don't forget tonight, we are giving away our December, all our product to make the December ornaments that we'll be teaching for our paint night live. Mm -hmm. So if you like mm -hmm. and share and comment below, I think you just have to comment and share actually <laughs> below, you'll be entered to win. So you wanna watch all the way through, comment and share, and then you can see the ornaments that we're gonna be doing next month. So we can't wait to give away that product. Yeah. yeah. So um, go so ahead. Like, like Kira was saying, there's lots of content um, in the Let's Paint program, and there's actually a skill builder that Andy has filmed that shows you just how to transfer using transfer hoover. So if you feel like you want to learn a little more about that, you can go watch that. Um, okay, so I've got all of my lines traced at the end of my paintbrush. So now I'm just going to flip it up and make sure all of my lines are there. And this is a good time, so if you missed any, you can lay it back down in the same spot and get those lines. But it looks like we've got them all covered, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull that off. And this transfer paper can be used over and over and over again, so we'll want to save that. All right. Someone has a question? Sure. Sure. What's the question? They want to know if uh, transfer paper will work on canvas or it, just wood. No, it would absolutely work on canvas. It will work on paper, canvas, wood, um, any surface that you're painting on that's not slick. So it probably wouldn't work on like plastic or glass if you're using multi-service paint. Anything that you would paint with acrylic paint on, the transfer paper should work on. Yeah, so somebody had a question of transfer paper, mm -hmm. what services? And you can see yeah. how crisp that line is. Like you mm -hmm. are literally creating almost like a paint by number. Right. I mean, you're yeah, creating totally. all like your lines. Book yes, the coloring book. Yeah, and a transfer paper comes in several colors. So if you had like a darker um, canvas, you could get a white transfer paper. Or if you had a white canvas, you can get black. It comes in red, yellow, all kinds of colors. So tonight we have this, this light gray color. OK, so we're going to start painting. So the first color we're going to put onto our palette is our vintage white. And you just need about a quarter size amount. You can always add more. And we are going to be using our one inch flat brush. This is the largest of your flat brushes. So we are going to go ahead and start painting the background, but we want to paint around these lines because we don't want to lose these lines that we just transferred. So I'll kind of show you what I mean. We're going to do it just like Kira said. It's kind of like a coloring book. And we're going to paint right up to those lines so we can still see them. Nothing fancy. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just want a nice, even coat of paint 
covering this sort of shiplap texture that's behind our pumpkins. And we are going to try, we can paint right up to the pumpkin, that's fine, but the lines that make up the background, we don't want to cover those. You can also paint your sides if you want to do that now, or you can do that later, totally up to you. Jesse, I'm gonna scoot you over just a tiny bit sure. so people can see your palette, because I think they okay. like to see like yeah. what you're mixing, painting, putting no your brush problem. into, yeah. Okay. The beauty of live, we yeah, can just adjust as we go. <laughs> so again, I'm just painting this background using my vintage white, which is a really pretty color. It's sort of a, an off-white ivory color. And we are painting around our pumpkins, um, and we are not painting over these lines, just going right up until the line so we can see where they are. And we just want to, like I said, we want a nice even coat of paint. We don't want a ton of paint, um, just enough so we've got a nice full coverage, which is not hard to do with the Folk Art acrylics. Um, they have amazing coverage, especially on these 12 by 12, or we have a 10 by 10 inch two um, wood canvases. The Folk Art paints go really nicely onto them. I'm just painting the background. Like I said, nothing fancy. We just want to make sure we've got a nice even coat and not painting over our background lines. We're going to go down the bottom two beneath our pumpkins. And it's okay if you um, are, if it gets a little rough around the edges of the pumpkin, because we're going to go and we're going to paint those blue. So if you, we need to correct those lines, if you accidentally go over the pumpkin a little, that's okay. We can, we can fix those in just a minute. Yeah, and so we are using folk art paint tonight. So typically we use our folk art acrylic paint. We've got this beautiful color palette, and I love that it's not the traditional orange and reds and yeah. yellows for fall. It's this beautiful blue is such a trend right mm -hmm. now in home decor. So it is this really beautiful rustic, like barn, farmhouse yeah, I look. Love it. And also our treasure gold. So if you guys have not, while Jesse's painting, I'm gonna I'm going to um, totally tell you guys about this treasure gold. It is, so we joke, it is the most gold gold. I don't know. Oh, this one's not even oh, open. Shoot, uh oh. Okay, you guys, it this is, so is shiny. the most gold gold. It's non toxic. It doesn't smell, but it gives you the most brilliant sheen. It's like literally metal in a bottle it when is. it comes out. It is so beautiful, and you can use, you can do a whole thing with it. Jesse's just going to show how to accent with it. But you guys, this stuff, you have to get this. If you're yeah. not even doing the painting, go out and get Treasure Gold. <laughs> get the Treasure Gold Click anyway. the link below, Plaid Online, Amazon. It is an amazing product. You have to have this. There's really no other paint on the market that is water-based and non-toxic that has a shine like the Treasure right. Gold. That just doesn't exist outside of, of, of this product. It is beautiful. We use it for everything. We and again, just the accent here. I got it on my finger. I'm kind of happy about that. I'm going to be <laughs> shiny tonight. I don't know if it's going to read. But if you tilt it a little, you'll guys, catch the it light. It is so beautiful. So treasure gold, buy that. And Folk art treasure gold. It comes in um, just that regular gold, just the standard gold. It comes in an antique gold. It mm -hmm. comes in a rose gold. So there's a whole variety beautiful. of colors. I'm going to wipe this. I got it all over the table, sure. which shouldn't be a bad thing. <laughs> we can just paint the whole table gold. It'll be fine. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign. Yeah. So again, Jesse is just, um, you know, working on the base coat. You're mm -hmm. using, what color is that? That is vintage white. Vintage white. So we're using folk art acrylic paint tonight for our Let's Paint Live. Don't forget to click the link below to buy the product if you're not already painting with us. You know, maybe weekends work better. You want to mm -hmm. watch this on demand. So you can watch on Facebook. You can watch on our YouTube channel. Yeah. I know a huge thing is getting together with your friends, making some time for yourself, party. get your mm -hmm. glass of wine, do your <laughs> painting. So, you know, it's finally fall everywhere. So yes. I think this is the perfect painting for this time of year. Awesome. Yeah. So you can see here that I've painted, finished painting my background. I, you might not be able to see it because it's a really similar color to the canvas, but um, I finished painting my background and I'm just cleaning my brush off. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my half inch flat brush and I'm going to put some of this blue lullaby, this is the lighter of our blues, on my palette. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, load my brush up. I some no of this blue I'm lullaby. Oh and we are going to hold our brush upright and we're going to paint the lines between that we left out on the white. So you'll see, I'm going to hold my brush upright and I'm just going to use the chiseled edge of this flat brush to paint a thin line. So you can just go and follow the lines that we've left showing. 
just like that. We're just painting on the lines. And then to soften these lines as we go, I'm going to continue adding some vintage white. So there's no really uh, rhyme or reason, there's no rules to this, but every once in a while I'm going to pick up some vintage white and put it on my brush along with my blue lullaby. And that's just gonna help soften that color so um, the lines look a little more dimensional, they don't look quite so cartoonish. And I'm just using the very chisel edge of my brush and I'm going slowly, taking my time, to paint those thin lines using my half inch flat brush. And then I'm going back and I'm adding some vintage white to those lines. I wanna say hi to some people. Okay. Can I say hi? There's so many comments and shares. So awesome. we hope you are commenting and sharing because you are enjoying our Let's Paint Live and our Farmhouse Pumpkins tonight. But also hope you are liking and sharing and commenting mm -hmm. because you will be entered to win the product for the December Paint Night Live, yep. which we are going to preview at the end of the video tonight. It's gonna be different than normal, so it'll be good. Yeah, it's exciting. It's the first time we've done something like that yeah. in December. So hi, Debbie, Alice, hey, Debbie. Katie, Jeanette, Janice, Rob and Gail. Hey, hi, guys. everybody, Kathleen, Vicki, Barbara, Hey guys, um, and I don't want to miss anybody. Lisa, Brenda, so many. So thank you all for watching. And don't forget when you paint to hashtag your painting because we want to see what you're painting. Um, hashtag plaid crafts and hashtag let's paint. So we can check out what you guys are making because you're making beautiful, we beautiful paintings. It. And um, we can't wait to see what everybody's doing with our farmhouse pumpkins. Yeah. All right, okay, there you go. so you can see I just painted some I'll quick I'll quit lines. interrupting so you can paint. <laughs> you can interrupt any time. <laughs> so I just painted in some quick lines with um, the blue, so it does not need to be perfect. This is sort of a rustic pumpkin painting, so it's going to be a little loose, um, and you'll see we're going to start with our paintbrushes, then get to the palette knife when it's going to be really loose. So just so don't worry if they're not perfect. We're going to cover it up a little anyway. Okay, so the next color I'm going to put on my palette is the French blue, and this is the medium of the blues that we are using tonight. So I'm gonna put a little bit on my palette. And I'm going to grab my 3 4 inch flat. This is the medium of the flat brushes that we're using tonight. And I'm going to paint my larger pumpkin the same way that I painted the background. So I'm gonna fill in the pumpkin part and I'm going to paint around the lines because you wanna be able to see those lines in our painting. So we don't wanna paint straight over them. So just painting right up until the lines. This is kind of, like I said before, it's kind of like Kira said, it's like a coloring book at this point. We're just kind of putting down our base colors and then we'll go in and we'll add some details and some texture using our palette knife. Right now we just want to get that base color down. And this is a really, really pretty blue, this French blue. I love this color. So we're just painting the, it's like I said, you can see this is one coat and we have such great coverage because we're using these folk art acrylic paints. This is why I love painting with these. A little bit goes a long way with the folk art paints. I love that. So we're painting right up until that line. I know. Those are good. And we're using, you can see that I'm kind of using um, the edge of my brush to get into the smaller details. I'm holding it upright, just kind of how we painted those lines to get into the smaller areas. And this, just like the background, does not need to be perfect because we're going to go back over it and create lots of texture on top with our palette knife in a little bit. So if it's not perfect, don't even worry about it. I am going to go right down to the white, though. And we're just filling it in. And on the side of the pumpkin, we do want to go straight up to the white because we're not going to paint any lines there. So we didn't want to cover up our lines with the same color because we would be able to see them. But since the, the two different colors will distinguish where the end of our pumpkin is, so we can just go straight up to the edge. I'm getting beautiful coverage with this paintbrush and these paints. It goes on so smoothly. It's so creamy. Filling it in. And 
make sure we can see where those lines are. Then I'm going on the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go straight up to the edge, just like we did for the right side, and that will be the edge of our pumpkin. We're just doing, like I said, we're just doing a base coat right now. We're going to add all of that texture and um, highlights and shadows and everything like that with the palette knife. Okay. All right. So once I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off. So I'm shaking the table. And now I'm going to pick up my half inch flap again. And I'm going to put some, oh, and I've got blue lullaby on my palette already. So we're going to pick up some blue lullaby and we're going to do the exact same thing to our smaller pumpkin. And the blue lullaby is the lightest of our blues. So we're just going to go straight up to the lines. We want to make sure we can see them. This is kind of a fun, relaxing part. It's kind of mindless, just painting in the lines. And again, don't forget, it does not need to be perfect. Don't spend too much time on this part because um, we're going to cover up a lot of it anyway. So this is supposed to be really loose, fun painting. So don't, don't stress about any of this being perfect. That is not what this painting is about. And again, I'm just using the chiseled point of my brush to get into the smaller areas. I've kind of got it upright so I can use that, the edge of my bristles. Just filling it in. And I'm going right up to the end of my pumpkin again, just like I did with the larger pumpkin. Okay, so now our smaller pumpkin is paint should be filled in with the blue lullaby. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean my brush off. Yep. So hey guys, um, we just want to check in with everybody. We are seeing everybody tuning in. Vicki, Shelley, Robin, Judy, Karen, hey Patty. Hi, so many Thanks people. For us. Teresa. So you guys don't forget to comment and share to be entered to win the product to create December's Paint Night Live, which we are going to preview at the end of this video. It is something that we've never done before mm -hmm. on Paint Night it's Live. We're excited getting into the holiday spirit. So we are painting farmhouse pumpkins. So it is beautiful, and I love the shiplack look, the rustic, the blue color Thank for you. fall. Blue is so hot in decor right now. Mm -hmm. I love this piece. And we want to know, is everybody, if you are painting along live, how are you doing? Are you have any questions? Are we at a good pace? Jesse's walking you through step by step. So again, if you have never picked up a paintbrush, our Paint Night Live, our entire Paint Night um, Let's Paint program is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. If you are a beginner or an expert, we have something for everybody. Absolutely. So whether it's Jesse, Andy, Donna, all our guest artists, we have something. We have studio lessons. We have tons of lives. You know, our teachers are so great about answering questions mm -hmm. and commenting. When you guys post your paintings, we'd love to see those. Absolutely. So don't forget to hashtag Let's Paint and hashtag Plaid Crafts so we can see what you're making. Um, don't forget, like I said, to share and comment so you can be entered to win all your product for December. Mm -hmm. And we just want to check in on everybody and make sure you're doing great. Jesse's creating these beautiful rustic blue pumpkins. Everybody loves the blue. I think everybody's doing good. I think a lot of people are watching after. And like I mm -hmm. said, 
so if you can rewind right so if you are not watching live with us right now you can watch this video at your own pace your own time on mm -hmm. Facebook right after it ends yep. or you can go to our YouTube channel tomorrow and it will be there along with all our other let's paint videos so we have a whole on-demand library of education that you can watch this and you can paint along at your own pace. So whether you're by yourself, relaxing, you wanna have a party, a group of friends, yep. you can do this all right there, which is so awesome. So I just wanted to check in. It sounds like there aren't any questions, but everybody is loving it. And hopefully everybody's gonna be painting this yeah. soon. Maybe this weekend, next weekend. Yeah, it's a fun one for this yeah, month. Yeah, it's fall, finally. The yeah. weather here has <laughs> it's finally- finally feeling like fall here. Yeah, yeah, so in Atlanta, it has been so hot it and humid. Mm -hmm. So we are ready for these pumpkins. We are, <laughs> we're yep. ready for fall for sure. All right, well, I hope everybody caught up or you're ready to go because Jesse's gonna keep going with Hi. our uh, farmhouse pumpkins. All right. So like here said, we wanted to give you a minute to make sure you were caught up. Um, you should have your shiplap base coated with the blue lines, and then we have our larger blue pumpkin filled in and our smaller blue pumpkin filled in. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint these lines. So I'm going to put some of this beautiful navy blue on my palette. I love this color, it's very rich and dark. So I'm gonna grab the smaller of my brushes, my half inch flat, and I'm gonna pick up some navy blue and I'm gonna fill in the lines just kind of how we did those shiplap lines. So I'll show you, I'm gonna use the top of my brush to create some lines. And it's okay if it's not perfect. It's better if it's not, because like I said, we are going to go back and we are going to add lots of texture um, and dimension with the palette knife. So it's gonna be very loose, a lot of this is gonna get covered up. Um, and just like we did with the shiplap, I'm gonna pick up some of my French blue as I go to soften that line a little. I don't want it to be quite so harsh. I don't want it to look like a coloring book when I'm done, even though it does now. So we're gonna soften that line. We're just put, we're not cleaning our brush. We're just putting the French blue, which is our base color, right over it. You can see I had too much paint on my brush. So I just kind of wipe it off if I've got too much. So I'm gonna continue doing this. I'm gonna paint these lines. Again, we're not spending too much time on this. We do not want to be perfect. Um, and a good tip if you're worried about your lines being too imperfect, if they're getting kind of squiggly, if you've got a shaky hand, a good tip is to hold your brush. If you're holding it down here, you're more likely to shake. If you're holding it like a pencil, hold it towards the end of the handle and that'll help you get sort of a, um, it'll sort of absorb some of the shakiness of your hand if that's a problem for you. And you'll be able to control your brush a little better. So we're just painting the navy and we're putting in French blue using the very tip chiseled edge of our half inch flat brush. Just adding that French blue in. We don't, like I said, we don't want these lines to be super dark because we don't want it to look like a, like a cartoon or something. We want it to look more realistic by the time we're done. So I'm adding in the French blue. You can see here I, I left out a little piece before when I was painting, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick up some French blue and I'm just gonna fill that in real quick. I just kinda missed that the first go around. So that way it's not left out. And I'll continue that line down there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush. And now I'm going to pick up, I gotta put some more on my palette actually, um, some more of the French blue still. I'm gonna add some more to my palette because we're gonna use this color, this medium blue color, as the lines for our smaller pumpkin. So we're just still doing the exact same technique, we're just making sure we've got all these lines filled in. So that way when we start putting all the texture on with our um, palette knife, we can still see all of this dimension. And we really don't want a ton of the um, raw canvas, the wood to be showing through. We want it to be completely covered in paint. Um, so we just wanna make sure that we're filling in the areas where the canvas is showing through. 
So again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up some, I'm going to grab some more actually of this again, some of the blue lullaby, which is the lightest of the blues we're using tonight. And I'm going to go over those lines that I just made, just how we've been doing, just to soften them a little. We don't want these harsh, harsh lines. And we don't want tons of paint on our canvas as we go either because once we start doing the palette knife, we don't want it to smear all around. We want it to kind of be drying as we paint. So it should be fairly dry by the time we go and start using our palette knife. Right now we're still just sort of filling in all of the base colors for our shapes. So it looks like everybody's sort of keeping up, so that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead, I cleaned off my brush. I cleaned off my half inch flat brush. I'm gonna put some mushroom on my palette. This is a really pretty medium brown color. Um, I use this color a lot when I'm painting. I think it's really, it's really soft and pretty. So I'm gonna pick up some mushroom with my half inch flat brush again. This is the smallest of our flat brushes that we're using tonight. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill in these pumpkin stems. So once again, do not spend a ton of time on this. We just wanna get those colors blocked in. So we've got that base of mushroom. And that's what color our stems are gonna be. We can go right up to the blue of our pumpkins. It's okay if a little blue gets in there because we're about to smear lots of blue around anyway with our palette knife. So don't worry about that. It does not need to be perfect. I'm just painting in the stems of the pumpkins with mushroom. That's the color of our paint of this brown and I'm using my half inch flat brush. Okay. So Margaret had, Margaret who is watching us, Margaret, so she had a great tip. Um, to avoid shaking when painting, exhale. When you breathe in, your hand will shake. Oh, interesting. I okay. love that. That's a great tip. That is a great tip. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Jesse, and I love your tip about how to hold the brush, too. Mm -hmm. Those are things like you never think about or yeah. unless you're watching like someone tells you to do that. Right. So I love those tips, guys. Keep those coming. Yeah. We've told you guys before, we always do a practice with our friends here at Plaid to make sure that we are teaching it to you the best way. So yesterday in our practice, one of the students had a trouble with their, sh their brush shaking. So another, another one of our artists here actually had that tip about holding your brush towards the end. So that, mm -hmm. that's thanks to Sherry. And that's what's so great about this platform is that mm -hmm. with everybody, all you creative people at home and all of the creative talent here, that we can share and talk and communicate. So I love this as a forum like that. Yeah, like we love your tips. And tricks. Please share. Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you. That was great. Thanks. Okay. So now we should have pretty much we should have paint on our entire canvas. So everything should be covered at this point. We've painted the lines, we've painted all the base coats, we've painted the shiplap background. Um, now it's time to start getting into our palette knife. So what I've got here is just a plastic palette knife from the craft store. Um, it's pretty long and slender, so you can use a metal one like this, but I'm going to be showing you how to use this shape of palette knife tonight. So I'm actually going to move this aside and we're going to do some practice with our palette knife to make sure that everybody sort of got the hang of it before we just start painting right on our canvas. And that's something else that we learned about yesterday in our practice. <laughs> so I'll show you how to load up your palette knife. So to load your palette knife, I'm going to hold it like this. See, I've got the handle this way. That's the way my finger is. I'm going to dip it in some paint. And then on my palette paper, I'm going to dab it up and down and that's sort of offloading some paint. So I picked up paint and then I dabbed it up and down to sort of offload. And you can see, I hope that there's not a ton of paint on there. I've got most of it off. And my paint is going about halfway down my palette knife. I don't want it to be completely full of paint because that's just gonna be too much to work with. You wanna be able to control where the paint is going. So I'm about halfway down my palette knife. 
So now we can get sort of a, a good idea of the way the palette knife will move and the way, the way the palette knife will apply paint. Because I'm sure all of you at home um, who have painted before are used to painting with brushes, so you have a good idea of the way to handle your brush. But palette knives are new to a lot of people. They're actually fairly new to me, so it takes a lot of practice. So now you want to hold your palette knife. On. We're just going to practice in the back of my template here, just so I can show you some, some ways to control it before we start putting on our, our painting. So you're just going to hold it down and you're going to spread it. You see the way that made that mark? So that's sort of like a rough, organic mark. I'm going to pick up some more paint and I'm going to spread it again. So this is a good practice to kind of get an understanding of how much paint you need to have on your palette knife. See, I had a little too much there. So I need less next time to get an idea of how much paint will be spreading once you have it on your palette knife. I hope that makes sense. So we're just going to practice on here so we can get an idea of how to apply a little and how to apply a lot of paint using our palette knife. So I'm not putting a ton of pressure, and I'm not even um, reloading my palette knife that often because I, I kind of like the irregularity of when there's like larger areas of paint and then um, areas with less paint. I like the irregularity of that. That's kind of one of the cool parts of using a palette knife. But just to get an idea of how we're dragging this, it's good to do some swipes off on the side or off on some paper before you just go using a new tool straight on your painting. So another good tip for using a palette knife is if you are paint, trying to get into a small area, so say I've got this circle here and I want to put a, a swipe of paint there, but clearly my palette knife is pretty big so I can't just swipe over it. I'm going to pick up some paint and I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing, sort of offloading, and then I'm going to put my finger at the top of my palette knife and that will give me some control of it. Can you see the way I'm holding it? So now I can use that to press right onto the space that I'm trying to press it onto. Does that make sense? It gives me some more control. And palette knives are flexible, so that's good. That's the way we're able to control it. They're really flexible, so you can bend them um, and sort of manipulate them any way you want to. So if you feel like you need to, feel free to keep doing some practice swipes until you kind of get a hang of the way it works. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start adding some palette knife painting to our painting. So I'm going to clean it off. Okay. So I'm going to pick up some blue lullaby, which is the lightest of our blues. Actually, a new paper towel. So I'm going to pick up some blue lullaby, and just like we did when we were practicing, I'm going to offload it quite a bit because I don't want a ton of paint on there. I want to be about halfway down my palette knife, and I don't have very much paint. And I'm going to go to the lines of our ship lap, and I'm going to hold my palette knife parallel to the lines, and I'm going to drag down. I'm going to use my ship lap lines as a guide. I'm going to go on there and I'm going to drag. And you can do kind of as little or as much as you want. I don't want a ton of paint on it, so I want it to be sort of rough looking. And I'm just going to use, add some texture to my shiplap background with my palette knife. I have very little paint on my knife. Using those lines as a guide to start there and then drag down. And this is going to give a little bit of dimension to our to our shiplap boards, our planks in the background. Add more paint to your palette knife as needed, but again, you don't want a ton of paint because the more you smear it around, just the messier it's going to get, and that's not really what we're going for. Another tip too is when you're using the palette knife, try to always go in one direction. Don't be going up and down because that's going to just smear paint back and forth. And what we want is just the one stroke, the beauty of that one stroke. If we try to start blending it back and forth, you're just going to be smearing it around and it's not going to be the look that we want. So I'm going to get into the smaller area with that trick I showed you. I'm going to put my finger towards the top and drag down. Do the same over here. And feel free to turn your canvas if you feel more comfortable, if you can get a better grip on it. And at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a lot of paint because you can see this is sort of like the table or the floor where our pumpkins are sitting and then the wall goes up. So I want to make sure that we can distinguish between the floor and the ceiling so it doesn't look like our pumpkins are floating. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth for the floor to make it look a little different. So I'm just going to go, again, I'm going in one direction. I shouldn't have said back and forth, but I'm going to go left to right as opposed to up, from up to down. I'm just adding some paint to the bottom here. And again, feel free to turn your canvas if it feels more comfortable for you to do it that way. 
I'm just going to add some blue to the bottom here so to, to distinguish it from the rest of my canvas. We're just doing a little bit of paint at a time. So I have to do a very special shout out. Our very own Andy Jones is watching. He just tuned in and it's his Andy, birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Andy. <laughs> Thanks for watching on your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so Andy does our, he's one of our main artists for our mm -hmm. Let's Paint program. And he does our studio lessons and our lunch and learn. So we want to say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Andy. Yeah, so also don't forget to, well, I'll wait. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. This Go ahead. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're just adding blue lullaby to the bottom. Thanks for tuning in, Andy. We love you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe this off. You can dip it in water if you need to and wipe it off onto your paper towel. Um, actually, you know what? I don't want to forget about the top, so... Let me go back. I'm sorry. I'm going to backtrack a little. I'm going to go and I'm going to reload my palette knife and I'm going to do a little bit at the top just so it doesn't look blank compared to the rest of the panels. So I'm just adding a little bit to the top so it's consistent with the rest of our wall. And you can see we're getting sort of a cool texture. Um, it's kind of light but it's sort of starting to look like a rustic barn. It looks like the, there's walls here where the paint has been chipping off. And that's the look we're going for, sort of a farmhouse look, just like the title of our painting. So really quick strokes. Again, do not spend a ton of time on this because we want them to be really loose. We don't have to think about them too much. Okay, so now I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife. And next I'm going to pick up some of my vintage white with my palette knife. And I'm going to load it just the same way we've been loading it. You can't really see on the camera, but I'm just doing the same thing we've been doing, sort of offloading it onto my palette. And I've got the paint. You can't see it, but I've got it about halfway down my palette knife. And we are going to go onto our pumpkins, and we are going to add some highlights to the pumpkins. So we want to start off with a little, because if we go straight in with the white, it's going to be really um, large and contrasted spots, and there's going to be real, it's, it'll be a little hard to fix. So start off with only a little bit of paint and we're going to start at the top of the pumpkin and sort of do some highlights. And you see I'm controlling my palette knife again by holding the tip with my finger and I'm going to drag down, kind of following the lines of the pumpkin. So we've talked before in our Let's Paint Lives a little bit about the light source and things like that, um, where to put your highlights and where to put your shadows and things like that. So for this one, we're just sort of assuming the light's coming in from the top. So we're just going to put all of our highlights at the top of things and all of our shadows at the bottom. We're not going to do anything crazy tonight. And I might add a little bit of highlight going down my pumpkin to create some texture. If you're feeling like you might want to, if you're feeling comfortable with your palette knife, feel free to put some texture on the rest of your pumpkin. And I'm you can see... You don't want to go back up like I just did. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. You want to just go in one direction. So I'm going to do the same thing for my smaller pumpkin here. Again, using my finger to control the amount of paint that I'm letting go. I just want to use the top of my palette knife because it's a small area. You don't want to go rework it too much. You don't want to keep going back over wet paint because you're just going to smear it and you're not going to get that sort of dry, dragged effect that we're going for. We don't want to just smear all the paint around. So we're just putting some loose highlights where we think they should go towards the top of our pumpkins, probably. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to rinse off my palette knife and I'm going to pick up some navy blue and that's the darkest of our blues. Pick up some navy blue. Again, offloaded most of my paint and I've got it about halfway down my palette knife. We're going to do the shadows of our pumpkins. So we're going to start at the bottom and drag up. And that's going to create some darker shadows on our farmhouse pumpkins. And again, I'm starting with only a little bit of paint because you can always add more, but it's much more difficult to take paint away than it is to add it. And a little tip too, if you really were kind of getting kind of overzealous and you put a giant blob of paint on your palette knife and you just smeared and you feel like you ruined your painting, don't worry, you did not ruin your painting. Um, I would let it dry 
and then say, so say I had used the blue and I did way too much paint on it and I didn't like it. I would wait till it dries and then I would go back over with my palette knife with the French blue, the base color, and I would swipe back over once it's dry and that'll sort of even out the texture and it'll make it um, less uh, dramatic of a swipe, if that makes sense. So just, it'll take a little patience or maybe you got a hair dryer, you can do it that way. Um, but wait till it dries and then go back over with your palette knife with the base color. We're just, again, we're just adding our shadows now. Kind of going up the sides of the pumpkin, following the shape of the pumpkin. You can see I'm kind of using my thumb here too, the same way I would use it because I'm going upside down, the same way I was using my pointer finger to add paint to our canvas. I'm going to do the same thing on my smaller pumpkin, creating some shadows. And if you do feel like the paint beneath is a little too wet and you're getting it on your palette knife, just go ahead and wipe it off and start fresh in a different area. I'm also going to use my blue and I'm going to add some shadows to my stems. So we're going to go towards the bottom of the stems. Again, I'm going to use my pointer finger to control the tip of my palette knife and I'm going to add just sort of the light wouldn't be hitting kind of beneath where that stem goes uh, diagonal. So I'm going to put a little shadow there and maybe you can put some at the base too if you like that. Do the same thing here. I'm going to put a shadow right here where it's sort of hooked and then I'm going to put a shadow down here at the base. Just adding a little bit of paint as I go, because again, I don't want to add too much. It's much easier to add than it is to take it away. All right. So I'm going to rinse off my palette knife. Actually, you know what? I keep getting ahead of myself. We're going to continue with the navy blue, and we're going to go around the edges. So I don't know if any of you out there um, like to refinish furniture, but we have a really cool tool um, called a layering block, and we're gonna use sort of a similar technique right now with our palette knife. So we're gonna take the palette knife, and this is gonna sound crazy, but we're gonna just gonna drag it all around the edges of our canvas. We're just gonna drag it, adding a little paint as we go, just drag it around the edges. And you can see that kind of makes it look like there was paint chipped off. It looks like maybe there was blue paint beneath this and our paint is chipping off. So you got a big swipe there, but I kind of like it. It's okay. We're just dragging it along the edges, thinking about where the paint would be chipped off if this painting was really old. If it really was hanging in a barn and it had been knocked around for many years, where would the paint be chipped? That's where we're going to pay the most attention to for this part. So it would be really chipped off the edges. So maybe give it a good a good swipe on those edges, make sure we've got it dark, but we're just gonna go on our edges. You can even too, if you've, if you've already painted the sides, um, or if you haven't, that's fine, you can go ahead and you can put it on the sides too to look like there's paint chipping off. Totally up to you. So maybe we can show everybody, this is like a good sure. time maybe. Yeah, Let's just see, see what the am final I getting it? There's a delay like. here. Oh, there we go. Woo, woo. There we go. Yeah. So that is how Jesse kind of added the distressing so you can mm -hmm. see on the edges. So you can add as much or as little as you exactly. want. Exactly. If you want it to be more subtle, if you want it to be kind of a softer look, you yep. can just add less of the palette knife. Or if you want it to be really distressed and sort of crusty looking, you can add lots of the palette knife. Yep. So that's a great example. There you go. So we're using over, there we go. John's pointing. So. Yeah, I know. We're like <laughs> overhead. We're <laughs> overhead still. We want everybody to see that. We're good. <laughs> I just wanted everybody to see like yeah, how totally. much you can add. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to continue with the blue, with the navy blue and our palette knife. And we are going to go and we're going to add some um, darkness to our shiplap. So we're going to go, when, remember when in the beginning when we were first painting the, um, when we were first painting with our palette knife, we did this blue lullaby. We do the same thing using our navy blue. And we're just going to add a little bit to sort of define the panels of that shiplap. We're going to start right on our line and drag. 
And again, like Kira said, you can add as much or as little as you'd like. You can make yours really distressed and dramatic, or you can feel free to make yours a little softer. It's totally up to you. Oh, look at that. See, that was huge. So if I really didn't like, I kind of like it, but if I didn't like it, I would just wait for this to dry and I would go back with my vintage white and do a swipe on top of it. And that would cover that up a little and make it less, less dramatic. But I like that, so I think I'm gonna leave it. And we're just going on all the lines and just dragging down. We're gonna put a good bit on the bottom too so we can distinguish where the bottom where our floor is, where our ground is, like we said earlier. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pick up or I'm sorry, on my, on my palette, I'm gonna put some real brown. And that's the darker of the browns that we have in our palette tonight. So I'm gonna put some real brown on my palette paper. And for this one, we're gonna add a little bit more shadow, but not a ton. I just wanna add um, some extra darkness to some places where I've got the navy blue. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of this real brown and I'm gonna offload it the same way that we've been doing, same thing. So I've, again, I've just got only a little bit of paint going halfway down my palette knife. And wherever I think there would be a really dark shadow from the light coming down, that's where I'm gonna put some real brown. So probably at the base of my pumpkins, they would be pretty deeply in shadow. So I'm gonna add some brown there, just a little bit, to give it some extra dimension. And I'm pulling up, don't forget, just I'm going in the same direction each time I swipe it. And I'm gonna put a little bit of brown on here too, just where I think the shadows would be darkest. So Jesse, while you're adding the brown, I'm gonna sure. interrupt one more time. Hold on, no John's problem. grabbing the camera here. <laughs> so Jesse, while you're adding the brown, like I said, I'm gonna interrupt because um, we just posted Camille, who is on our social team, um, a great reminder about our Let's Paint Facebook group. So you visit our Let's Paint Facebook group. It is a group of artists mm -hmm. who are established, learning artists. It is a community where you can learn and share, yep. comment, all the tips and tricks mm -hmm. that Let's Paint Live has. So we want you to join that group. It is just such a great it's place. Great. It's hundreds of people posting their artwork, getting feedback, getting yep. um, tips and advice yep. on their artwork. So it's really yep. great. It's Let's Paint with Plaid is our mm -hmm. Facebook group. So Camille can also post the link below the more information, but check that out because if you are loving this and you want to learn to paint or you mm -hmm. already are a painter and you want more, it is just such a great community of artists. It's where everybody can collaborate. Yep. We comment, people like, share. It is just such a great resource right. for all our artists out there. So we also have Andy's Lunch and Learns that are on there. We have all our content. So anything like this, our Let's Paint Live, mm -hmm. any new content, we're going to post it there. We have exclusive education. There's a lot of exclusive content mm -hmm. on there too. Yeah, so don't forget to check that out. That's a great call out that Camille posted in the comments below. So make sure you do that if you're loving this. Yep. Another great thing about that um, group is that all of the artists here at Plaid participate too. So it's a great chance for us to see your artwork and us to give you advice. Um, or just to say how beautiful it is. Andy's on there, Chris is on there, um, Priscilla Hauser even participates in that group. So um, it's a really great community for artists. Yeah, all of you out there. Okay. okay. And so I'm gonna bother one more time, I promise, and <laughs> then I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. So somebody asked about our shirts. Oh, yeah. So actually, if you go to Amazon, we have a Amazon merch page mm -hmm. where you can get Mod Podge t-shirts, our Let's Paint yep. t-shirts, folk art t-shirts, so you can get long sleeves, short sleeves. Yep. We have sweatshirts. Yeah, you can basically you personalize it. Mm -hmm. So these are great. We wear them for all our paint nights. But get your merch. Go to Amazon.com. Really you can just, um, I don't know, what do you even search? Search for Plaid Let's Paint. Search for Plaid Let's Paint on <laughs> Amazon yeah. t-shirt. And this will come up on there. Isn't that yeah. terrible? I don't know. But <laughs> so again, Mod Podge. We have our folk art. We have our Let's Paint t-shirts. Yeah. We have really cute Mod Podge designs. All going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so like some super cool vintage ones. Yeah. So check They're that really out. Retro. Okay, cool. 
That's a really great tip too. We've got a lot of cool merchandise on there that you guys can represent your favorite brands and stuff. So, Okay, so you can see here, I've just finished putting my real brown on the base of my pumpkins. So I'm gonna pick up a little more. I cleaned my palette knife off because I didn't want to dry on there while we were giving you some reminders. I'm gonna add some, flip this around. I'm gonna add some real brown at the base of my stems where they would be really in shadow. And then that's it for the real, that's it for the real brown for my painting. That's all I wanna add to it. So I'm cleaning off my palette knife. And now we are going to get to the most fun part of this painting, the treasure gold. So I'm going to rearrange a little here because I want you to be able to see me pour out the treasure gold onto my palette. Can I help you? Flip it around. I think okay. I got it. Thank okay. you, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's easier than I thought it would be. Okay, so we've got treasure gold here that like Kira and I talked about in the beginning. Um, it's really super shiny. It's probably the most metallic, water-based, um, non-toxic paint on the market. So. Um, you don't have to use any, anything smelly, you won't have to use any um, solvents trying to clean your brushes. It's all water-based, so you'll see. I'll pour out some onto my palette here. You can see just how, see in there just how shiny it is in the bottle. I'll pour some out so you can see just liquid gold. It's beautiful. It's almost like gilding. Okay. So we're sticking to the same technique we've been using. We're going to pick up some, oh, let me make sure I'm straight here, pick up some of the treasure gold and we're going to offload it just how we've been doing, same technique. And now I, you can pretty much add the treasure gold wherever you'd like. I'm going to use it to highlight, but I'm also going to put some in the background. I'm also going to use some to distress the edges um, just because it adds like a really beautiful shimmer. You can see on mine here, I put some in the edges, I put some around my canvas. I just used it kind of just to add a pop in some places. So you can kind of choose where you think the treasure gold will be beautiful, but I'll show you what I'm going to do here. So I've offloaded. I'm going to start at the top of my pumpkin and I'm going to add some highlights. Doing the same technique, just dragging down using my palette knife. Putting as much or as little as you want. It's totally up to you. I really love the treasure gold, so I'm going to add lots. I'm going to add some highlights to my stems and just see how loose I'm being. That's kind of the fun part of painting with a palette knife is you can't control it that well, so it's kind of like you have no choice but to be loose with it. So that's fun. For any of you perfectionists out there who have trouble painting more loosely, this might be a good test for you. It'll help you to loosen up a little. I'm still just putting my finger on my palette knife there to keep that control. And palette knives too, of course, are really great for mixing paint. That's kind of what they're meant for. So if you do a lot of mixing on your palette um, and you don't, sometimes when you mix paint with your brush, it kind of gets like really down into the ferrule um, and it kind of messes up your brush a little. So this is a great um, solution for that is to mix with your palette knife on your palette. So I'm going to do some on my ship lap. Got some paint on there, so I'm going to wipe it off. Just in some places to give it an extra pop. That was a big one. I'm going to go all around my edges and sort of distress with it. You can see, even when it's wet, the treasure gold is really shiny. Right off the bat, it's so beautiful. It's my, like I said, it's one of my favorite new paints that Plaid has created under folk art. All right. So that's sort of the last of the paint that I'm going to add. Last but not least, you need to make sure you always sign your canvas. So you can use a small brush or a marker or a pe pen, however you like to do it. Um, but that is the <coughs> final step of our painting. So once again, make sure you sign your name after you've added all of your treasure goals. And I think that's it. Yeah. So Jesse, thank you so much for teaching us 
farm, uh, farmhouse pumpkins tonight. So we have this beautiful pumpkins. It is so gorgeous. We, I love the blue for fall, even though it's not traditional. <laughs> it blue is such a trend color. Treasure gold, you guys. If nothing else, you have got to get treasure gold. Mm -hmm. It's so gorgeous. This d video doesn't do it justice. No, it doesn't. So I promise you you're going to want this. So again, thank you for joining us for Let's Paint Live. And comment and share below. We are going to announce our winner tomorrow here in the comments. So you are going to win everything to participate in our December Paint Night Live. Mm -hmm. So we are going to show you guys a sneak peek. Jesse, you want to hold some sure. of these? So Jesse made these adorable ornaments on wood slices. So it's this cute rustic. We've got trees, we've got a wreath, and we have a cute little buffalo check with a deer. So you guys, we are going to teach you how to make all of these. We're going to hand paint them next month. Yeah, super easy, mm -hmm. super cute. These are great to give as a gift. Yes, perfect These, gifts. you know, you could buy the product and then you can also like, sh you know, have a little party and show yeah. everybody how to make them. Like make ornament Christmas cookies, that would be a blast. Yeah, like ornament exchanges are such a big trend. Mm -hmm. So we love these ornaments. We've never done anything like this. So we're yep. super excited. Check out the event that's listed on our Facebook page. So you can RSVP. It is December 5th at 7.30 p.m. Jesse and I will be here with everybody. We're going to be having a holiday party, We're going to be painting the ornaments, and again, don't forget to hashtag your projects. So once you paint farmhouse pumpkins, we want to see hashtag let's paint, hashtag plaid crafts, and don't forget to check out our Facebook group that we mentioned. Again, all this information is in our comments below. You can get all our product, you can get our patterns. Check out let's paint, so it is our platonline.com slash let's paint webpage that has all this information on it. It's a lot to tell everybody, but it you is. guys, it is such good. There's a lot of content. Like you want to go there. You <laughs> want this. Mm -hmm. So we hope everybody enjoyed. Thanks for um, joining us and painting along. We hope you're relaxing and being creative. So happy crafting, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.